Welcome everybody. Today we're going to look at another portrait that is using a lot of reds and browns. But overall, I wanted to talk about something that I think a lot of artists maybe overlook, and that is the lighting environment that their paintings live in. Now for me, I know my paintings get a little crazy. They're a little abstract. I use a lot of different colors, but all of these colors are within the same lighting environment. So even if it's a very saturated red or a subtle blue, whatever it is, I try to make sure that the entire painting has a living, breathing environment that all colors abide by. So how do I go about approaching doing this? Well, for starters, I make sure that all the colors have a tone association to them. So this painting, for example, the darker shadows are a little bit cooler than as I get into the mid-tones, things warm up a little bit, and I make sure to keep that consistent throughout so that the direct light, the light hitting the highlighted portions of the face, that is a particular light source, but around that in the shadows, the ambient light around the entire subject is a little bit cooler. So when I'm putting together my entire palette of paint before I even start to do the drawing process, I make sure the darkest paints are fully taking into account the ambient lighting that's happening around the subject. And what I enjoy doing the most is changing those environments for each painting. I really get bored just doing the typical skin tones where you end up just painting over and over again these tan colors that really for me just are very restrictive and it doesn't really allow me to fully explore the creative ideas that I want to explore because part of me wants to be a figurative painter but the other part of me really wants to think in abstract ways so by changing the lighting environment that allows me to explore a lot of avenues that are not possible if all you're doing is lighting your subject in the same outdoor lighting or interior lighting so I like to think my subjects are kind of in just different worlds altogether. So there's a couple different ways that I explore doing these different worlds. And the first one that is fairly typical for me, especially if it's a completely new concept, is I'll take a photo that I took, put it into Photoshop, and play around with those environments really quickly. It's a very useful tool when you want to just try some things out. You don't have to worry about wasting paint. You can do some color corrections and see what the shadows would look like one color, the highlights another, and keep trying different things until you land on something that you find you want to actually apply paint to. Another way that I go about this is to simply pick a few colors. I'll, I'll just randomly get my palette set up and throw a a few different colors together for a darker pile of paint. Then the mid-tones, I'll try a different co couple colors. And then for the highlights, I'll have a completely different set of colors for that as well. The key is to have these individual piles of paint set up and don't deviate from that too much. Now, of course, in life, there's accent colors all around us. Nothing is just locked in as one color in the highlights, one color in the mid-tones, and one color in the shadows, but if you end up with five completely different colors in the same tonal area, the same light or dark area on your palette, there is almost a guaranteed chance it's not going to work. You really want to have those accent colors be slightly shifting to slightly different colors, or if you decide to go with a very, very intense color, just make sure that you don't overdo it with a bunch of intense colors, especially if they're in the same tonal region. Again, there's ways to bend the rules, there's ways to break the rules, but there are times when you're just gonna get past any sort of color harmony that will make the painting appealing. And one thing that I think really helps, especially me when I was getting started, was looking at all of the other artists that I really admired and seeing how they applied their tonal composition, their color composition, how they viewed colors, and 
you will find that the best painters out there, the ones that look like they're just doing all kinds of amazing things, especially when it comes to color, you're going to see that they're bending these rules, they're breaking these rules, but they're not overdoing it. They're keeping it actually fairly simple a lot of the time where you'll see one tonal range has a blue, another tonal range will have a red. And once a painting has those rules set, they don't really deviate from those set environment rules because all of a sudden your color composition will get really confusing and just not as appealing to look at. Now, with this painting, you're seeing the second layer after the first one's dried, I decided to go with a very intense red, but I am keeping the same environment in my mind as I paint this. So the darker reds by the hairline on the left there, they're a little bit cooler. They're still red, but I've added some coolness to them so that it's still being affected by that same environment light, the same way as the areas in the uh, fully exposed portions of the face. So then when we get into the mid-tones, I have a little bit more of a intense red that is sort of that base color, that mother color for the entire layer. But as it shifts in the dark area, it gets cooler, and then as it shifts into the lighter area, it gets warmer. So it's the same rules that I applied to this painting for that first layer. Now let's imagine for a second that I decide to completely change the environment and I decide to throw a very intense blue or a very intense green right on top of that red that or the red, the orange that is on the upper part of the face. You can just imagine how awful that would look. It wouldn't look right whatsoever. Now is there a way to make that look correct? Sure. You could create an accent color of blue, but you would need to have it in a completely different part of the painting. You could put it down by the lower right side of the neck, as long as there's some buffer area, that neutral color that's on the first layer. If you had a, enough neutral space between the intense orange and a blue on the bottom right of the neck, you could make it work, but you have gotta make sure that you balance that blue with the orange and red that it's already there. Even though they're separated by that buffer area, you still can't go super intense with it or it may not work. Now, if you decide your environment is just gonna be packed full of accents, that could be the world your artwork lives in, your abstract work could live in that world, but you have to make sure there's a balance. You don't wanna have too many extremely strong colors fighting each other, especially if they're really close by. But again, the further apart they are, you can go more intense. There's a lot of things you can try out and see what does and doesn't work. But for me, I decided this was a perfect place to call it a day with this painting. I think it turned out pretty well. It was only a two layer painting. Sometimes it works out really smooth. I can get it done in two layers. Other times it takes maybe three or four, but I'm pretty pleased with how this painting finally wrapped up. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do have a Patreon account, so if you want to check out some other tutorials that are more in depth, feel free to go to the links below this video, and I will see you again next week.